All right. So this brings us to the next segment. Now, this segment is going to be a little bit different. It's still named the same, um, but we're going to talk a, a lot about some of the things that are going on currently right now in our society. So as you guys know about it, um, welcome to another episode or segment called Bullshit. Bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right, so Jai, how do you want to start this one off? We'll you know what? We do segments on bullshit so that uh, the people know what actually happens on in in the freight transportation, what happens on the road, these things happen, uh, whether it be car accidents or something to ha- driver fatigue, anything that happens on the road, we always want to talk about it or wine heist. But this segment, we are going to get a, we're going to get a little real with everyone. We want to talk about some issues that is going on right now across the entire world. Yeah. And this is a sore subject for a lot of people. Um, Nick and I received phone calls um, from a lot of people who, um, and, and, and I'm going to tell you what it is. It's not phone calls that we're getting from our heritage. These are phone calls that we are getting from um, Caucasians, our Caucasian friends, mm-hmm. because of what happened with George Floyd. Okay. And so there's a big movement of Black Lives Matter movement. There's a big thing with racism going on. And a lot of people have asked us to address it or they want to know our take on it. And so we are here to let America and the world know our take on the situation being a Black company, okay? Yeah. Being Black entrepreneurs in the United States in the transportation industry that is uh, global. So we wanted to bring this up. Um, Were we wanting to talk about it? No, no, we weren't. Because when you are used to some things, you kind of just go along with the flow and you know, okay, well, this this will blow over. I mean, we've been going through this for 400 plus years. Now, me, I'm, I'm 40 years old in the next six months. So for 40 years, these are things that I have dealt with. And you also, Nick, yeah. these are things that you have dealt with and our parents and our ancestors and so on and so forth. And so this is something that we do want to address. It is a sore subject, but I think what we need to do is address it. But the way we want to address this is uh, with love. Yeah. Now, so, okay. go ahead. So what I, what I was going to say is... Um, I when we we've seen we we we've seen killing we've seen the killings of uh, a lot of people our people and i but i've never had people come and ask well what can i do yeah. you know it's different the moment it happened i knew it's different it was different and i knew it was going um uh, uh, to make some changes and I think people are starting to wake up on the other side of the aisle to see that, okay, yeah, this is this is jacked up. And they're asking, what can we do? And we're, we're seeing all the changes that are um, going on currently right now um, throughout the country. And one thing that Jai and I were talking about is that, you know, thank you for the people who are asking, what can we do? Thank you to the people who are wanting to be able to make change. Thank you. Um, um, to the folks that want to know what can we do to make sure that uh, there's a resolution to this fight. The one thing that we can tell you guys to do is something that we tell you on the show on a daily, well, every single week, love thy neighbor. We tell you that every single time, love thy neighbor. Uh, And the reason why that's so important is because we want to make sure you're not now wanting to do something because it's, it's the popular thing to do. The we want to make sure, yeah, the fire's yeah. hot now. I want to I wanna hop into it because politically it seems more correct. If right. you're going to hop into this, uh, hop into it. Make sure that you're treating everybody that the same way you want to be treated. Make sure that, and if you can't think about the way you want to be treated, then 
treat everyone the same way you want your loved one to be treated, your spouse, your kids, your parents, you know, your, your grandkids, whoever the case may be, because there is going to come a time where unfortunately this is going to, you know, start to come down. Are you going to be one of those people where, okay, it's cool. Now I did what I was supposed to do. And now I'm going to hop out. If you hop in and hop in, you know, and do it after, with a sincere heart. Yeah. Don't, what don't just do it because it seems heart? easy to do. Yeah. Um, so I, I try to kind of hold my tongue on, on, on some, on some things because I can get a little bit fired up myself about it. I was talking to you, Jai, earlier about this, um, friend of mine, uh, at the barbershop, his name is Otis Johnson. He hit me to a young lady named Kimberly Jones. And I'm hoping that I say this correctly because I'm kind of coming off of what I remember on this. Uh, but I know that I have had people to say in the past, you know, I just don't understand why, you know, people are complaining about something that happened so long ago. I don't understand why black people are complaining and continue to say 400 years. It's been 400. It was 400 years ago when this first started or slavery. Well, leave was, They're saying yeah. leave us alone, leave us alone, leave us alone, yeah. stop killing us or yeah. um, uh, give us some opportunity or um, uh, give us equality or treat us the same. These yeah. are the things that we're hearing all the time. Go ahead. Yeah. But, and, and they're saying, well, I don't understand why, you know, it happened so long ago. You know, it's 2020 now. Why can't you just catch up? Why can't you just, you know, we, we, we've done it. You know, why can't you? Right. So to those, to those people, and I want to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm giving you this information where it's easy to digest, but also just as easy to um, regurgitate to someone else. Right. If you have a hard time understanding Black people's plight in America, um, and I, like I said, I got this from a friend of mine informed me about it from a young lady named Kimberly Jones, and I'm hoping I'm, I'm delivering this information correctly. Uh, she was talking about and related to the game of Monopoly. Correct. And I actually truly like this. I like this analogy a lot. And for anybody that's watching, um, you know, regurgitate this information. But imagine, if you will, this. If you're wondering, you know, I just don't understand, you know, it happened so long ago why are you still in this in this area why are you still right. protesting and fighting and, right. and, and doing all this stuff well here's something to kind of think about i am one person who had the privilege of understanding compound interest and um, generational wealth i understand how that works many people that have generational wealth or had the opportunity to take advantage of compound interest they grew up in it so it it it, it doesn't have as much of an effect as it has on others who haven't had it, but had to learn mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So in saying that, imagine if I came to you and said, you know what, let's play Monopoly. Okay. Uh -huh. um, but I'm not going to bring the board. What I want you to do is to build the game from scratch with your own hands. Now that's going to represent two things here. And I'm kind of ad living here. I'm adding some things. You building a board, number one, will represent um, black people's agri agricultural work in the South. And then you building the pieces with your own hands uh, represents the textile work that black people had to do in the North. Okay, so now you built the, you built the board, board is ready to go. Mm -hmm. We start playing. Now, my next rule is before you start, I'm gonna pick the pieces and I'm gonna go around the board 400 times, okay? Everyone's so before you start, Mr. Black Man, I, me, Mr. White Man, is going to go around the board 400 times. 400 times. We've plus. all played Monopoly. Yeah. 400 plus. plus times. So we've all played Monopoly. Sit and think about the advantage you're going to have, the properties you're going to be able to get, the, the buildings you're going to be able to put on the game. Um, you know, the real everything that you're going to be able to gain, the $200 you get every single time you pass go. Think about that. And only then I'm going to allow you the opportunity now to be able to play with me. Now we can go back and forth and roll the dice. Okay. Now after 50 more turns, 
I am them going after after the 50 times you've been able to acquire some property, not probably the best ones, but you have some property you're going to be able to acquire. You're going to be able to build some buildings. You're going to be able to build banks and do everything you need to do. And after about 50 turns, then I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to take away the buildings that you had. That's going to represent, ladies and gentlemen, Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It's right. going to uh, uh, represent Rose, uh, Rosewood, Illinois. I mean, Rosewood, um, Florida, the burning, mm -hmm. uh, the burning of that. So the, that, that's what that represents. OK. And then now after I've taken away that, we're going to go back and forth again. Now, after going back and forth again, I'm going to make a couple of more changes. I don't like the way the cards are being pulled. So I'm going to toss in more go to jail cards in your deck and more get out of jail free cards for me. Okay. So think about that. Okay. And then I'm going to say, I don't understand why you can't catch up. What you have to understand is that when you when you're playing a game like that, you're playing on behalf of the people that you're playing against. Think about if I started out like that, would you want to continue to play this game? Would you want to continue to go on? And the only way to really kind to uh, make things equal at this point is to share the wealth. But even when you somewhat share the wealth in the game, now it's called an equal opportunity hire. You were hired because of equal opportunity. You were hired because just because you were black. I mean, not it, because you were qualified. Yeah. So there's so much in that. So I, I just want people to be able to have a quick, you know, four to five minute way to be able to explain and to be able to see and ask the question. Sit and think if you sat down and played the game of Monopoly and you gave me all those options to go around 400 times, to take away your stuff after uh, 50 times, to change the cards on you, would you still want to play? Think about no. that. No, you Think wouldn't want to play. And it's not equal. And so what we have to get to the bottom of is, is there equality? No. And here's the thing that I like to say to a lot of people out there who, who say, I don't get it, or why are they so mad? A nation of people who were on a continent of Africa did not wake up one day and say, hey, let's get on a boat, go to a land that we've never known, become slaves, and let the people beat us, castrate our children, uh, take our children, not give us anything, make us sleep on the floor, give us rags to put on, pick their cotton, make them rich without a dime. And then after we do that and they say no more slavery, they get mad because the free labor is gone. So we're going to make their lives a living hell. Putting police organizing a structure where um, you have policing within the country. That, that starts up after that. They, those, those are the things you have to think this. about. So now, and- Yeah, our ancestors did not say, let's go do that and run and jump into this. So these are the issues that we have to address, even with us being entrepreneurs and in the industry of transportation. Do we see racism? Of course we do. Do we have to work harder than the next man? Of course we do. Do we receive capital or investments? No, we don't. Do we get customers quicker than everyone, just like everyone else? No, we don't. Why? Because there is a stigma that is on a nation that is looked upon as bad. Now, Nick, I'm looking at you. You have two eyes. Mm -hmm. You have two hands, you have a nose, you have a mouth, you have two ears, you have hair, you have legs, you have feet, just like every other man on this earth. There is nothing that is separating the way man, God put man together. Yes. There is nothing that is separating that. But for some reason, this inequality and this racism is still so strong in America. And the people are, I, I can say tired, 
I, I talked to my mom about this. I asked her, mom, when you was coming up, what, what did you deal with? And she told me out of her mouth, they would stick the dogs on us. Uh, we had to work in the sugarcane fields. Yeah. They sprayed us with water holes. Why? Why? Why, Nicholas? Why? It's deeper than people think. Yeah, it is. It is definitely deeper than people think. Um, it. So now there's a, and in, in there there's one thing I two things I want to do. Um, two things I want to do. One, help express to folks who are asking us the question, what can we do? Yeah. And both Jock and I are both going to kind of help explain this. Number one, treat people the way you want to be treated. Um, you know, really, for folks that have um, certain uh, attributes and, and, and privilege, help educate others. Yeah. That's going to be an important piece. Educate Knowledge. others. Say again? Knowledge. Knowledge. Educate Knowledge. others. And then ha and, and try to think objectively, which basically don't look at things from your own lens. Try to understand the other side. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can believe in my mind that I'm 100% right in my thinking, okay? And possibly not want to think um, outside of my own personal truth. I don't want to see outside of my own personal truth or even my political truth. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, that's bigotry. You have to look outside of your own personal truth to see what others are also thinking. That's the only way you can grow. That's the only way you can have understanding for the next man. So that's the first thing I want to say is uh, really open up your minds to see, you know, where, 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 why is this happening? You know, mm -hmm. why is, why is there uh, protesting? Why are people out in the streets? Ask the question, why? Find out where that started from where where it originated from first ask that opposed to just saying that's not right find out why dig deep the second thing i want to be able to read and i'm, I'm first off i'm going to say i'm sorry for anyone who uh, may watch our channel and you are not religious or you're an atheist or whatever the case may be um i do want to read a passage um, of the bible and even if you are an atheist, um, I have heard and I have some friends who are atheists that says that the Bible does have great proverbs in there. Um, it's good information to be able to learn how to live life. So if you're one of those people, then take it that way if you need to. Uh, but um, I am I'm going to read a scripture from uh, Romans chapter 13, verse 8 through 14. And in this section, it's it's all about love one another. So if you're one of those people that you, you know, you read the Bible because um, you believe in the faith, then great, you'll understand where I'm coming from. If you're one of those people that read it just for a uh, proverb, hopefully this helps out. If you're a person that just doesn't believe in it at all, then hopefully even the words themselves would possibly make some sense when it comes to just um, your moral compass alone. So I'm going to read this and, um, I will, I will say I've always had, uh, because of the language, I've always had some problems reading the Bible sometimes, like just smoothly. So please forgive me if I make any stumbles, ladies and gentlemen. But chap, um, uh, chapter 13, verse 8, Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he hath loveth another, hath fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandments, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I'm going to stop there because this is probably like, this is very critical, especially during this time. You've heard myself, you've heard Jai every single time say this at the end of every single show. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And that knowing the time that now is, it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness 
and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantingness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. I'm gonna go back to uh, verse 10. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Doesn't love matter if you- Love worketh no ill towards his neighbor. And this is not just for the African-American community and the white community. This is for the mixed multitude that is in this country and that is on this earth. We are all one melting pot. We are all sons of Adam. After the flood, we are all sons and daughters of Noah. And we are all shades of brown. I'm gonna treat you the way I wanna be treated. And I am asking for you all to treat others the way you want to be treated. Love thy neighbor as thyself. You wouldn't kill yourself. Don't kill your neighbor. You won't steal from yourself. Don't steal from your neighbor. You won't spit on yourself. Don't spit on your neighbor. You won't deny yourself the financial security, even in the workforce, even in the entrepreneurship world. Don't do it to your neighbor because it is crucial because God, I promise you, he is going to bring everything into remembrance when there is a judgment, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And you do not want to stand before the angel and say it was an error. No. So and that brings me to something else, Jai, something else I was telling you. Um, and for, for, for my atheist friends out there, um, and many people, um, uh, others hopefully understand that truth comes out. So out. I'm going to go back to what I said before. Hopefully you're doing this for the right reason. If you're asking us, what can we do? Because you're wanting to, um, to be a part of it because it's the, it, everyone's doing it right now. Uh, it's going to come out that you're doing it that way. But for if you truly height. have any... Yeah, it's it's hype. It's the bandwagon thing. But um, if you truly this, if you truly want to know what can you do, and you truly want to uh, um, see a change, you start off there. You know, do unto others you have uh, them do unto you, mm -hmm. not as they do unto you, but as you would have them to do unto you, and uh, continue continue it on, even if it, you know, fizzles down a little bit. You continue on. If you see it happening, call it out. Don't just stop because everybody else is stop, stopping. The same reason. Right. Don't just start because everybody else is starting. Right. I'm hoping that you're asking because you actually feel it like, okay, you know what? Genuinely. Something is wrong. Yeah, yes. something's wrong. So, and I'm glad that we kind of had this conversation, Jai, because at the end of the day, uh, when my grandkids asked, you know, during this time, what were you doing? I want to be able to say that I gave some type of message um, to our viewers, to the listeners, and this is something that can be seen um you know throughout the test of time so as you always say Jai, <laughs> i want to say love thy neighbor everyone let's put racism down let's let, let my kids just came in here everyone can see so everyone is up <laughs> in. but i have black children you have black children mm -hmm. and the fear that they will hate will still be in the earth yeah. is something that i fear i teach my children to love everyone mm -hmm. don't hold any love back from anyone because you have to look out for your own salvation yeah. and that right there will let everyone sleep peacefully if you know that you have done your part with god and with your neighbor then you should be able to sleep peacefully but if you're doing it just for the hype then you might as well not do it at all because God ponders the heart. And we don't want to do things for the wrong reason just because it's the hype right now. No, 
just because it's black and white and then shades of gray come, you go back to being who you originally were. If you're going to instill change, change starts with yourself. Like Michael Jackson said, I'm looking at the man in the mirror. Who are you going to be? Are you going to be a bad person or are you going to be a good person? Are you going to be one who loves thy neighbor? Or are you going to be one who stares up strife and hate? And the only way this thing can change is if everyone takes accountability for themselves and loves their neighbor. So we're happy you guys uh, um, joined us. Um, please comment below. We definitely want to see what you guys have to say. Um, yeah. As always, take care and love that love neighbor. neighbor, of course. Take care. <laughs> take care.